Um, because this made me really excited about performance, I wanted to show you guys five bonus tips. Because this is amazing. Um, as you remember, I learned that route right output slowed my scripts down quite a bit. So here's just some differences. If you just go through it and you do nothing, it, this takes 3.5, uh, sorry, 3.7 milliseconds. If you pipe it to null, it increases it by 5.2. Right output um, it increases it to a massive 29.9. And if you write the progress, then that increases it by 1,000%. Write progress is the reason that if you've ever done invoke web request dash out file and it takes forever, it's because it's writing every single byte and that's slowing it down. So consider that whenever you're creating your own scripts. Third question? Yes. What was it? The last step? The last step? No, 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 this one, what you're saying about the byte on the invoke web request. Invoke right. Web request. Oh, okay. Right, so yeah, with invoke, whenever, it's take, whenever it's downloading that and yeah. it's writing it to your disk, it's just counting every single one of those, so that's what's slowing it down. Next, ignoring output is really important too. A lot of us pipe to out null, and granted, really this is kind of an efficient thing, but just to keep it in mind, so if you void it, it's 0 0.21 milliseconds. If you do null equals, it's 0 0.21 milliseconds. If you, if you send it out to null, it's 0 0.67 sorry, 0.67 milliseconds. Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> but if you pipe it to out null, then that becomes, uh, a, that's a massive increase. Um, that's a bug. Was that? That's a bug. Is it? Because the, the, uh, the redirection to dollar null should be exactly equivalent yeah. to piping to out null. Yeah. And the fact that there's a huge difference. Really? So they should be exactly equivalent. So these two should be exactly yeah, equivalent? So when you're doing redirection in, in PowerShell, it rewrites the pipeline from redirect to a file or null mm -hmm. to pipe into either out null or uh, out file or what. So are you so saying that this part is the bug or that it's a bug in PowerShell with the piping? The fact that they're different is, is a bug. Out null and like the, 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 the redirection to out null could under the covers be turning into the bottom line. Gotcha. Out null. Okay. And I suspect what's happened is that Jason was optimized in one case, but not the other. Gotcha. <laughs> um, I learned this about two weeks ago. Stephen Owens had a, had, a, had a blog post about speed. Uh, I love doing this. It was something that I wasn't able to do in PP script. Um, and now I can do it in PowerShell, so that plus equal thing is so damn cool. But it takes 43.9 seconds, and the reason is because it rebuilds the, uh, the array each and every time. Um, with If you just do a dot add instead and you make it an array list, it goes from 43 seconds to 1.7 seconds. There's, a, there's another tip, I suppose. Yes. If you do it in a for each loop, mm -hmm. and you just pipe the output or redirect, assign the output of the for each loop into a variable, it'll be both the same as doing the add to an array list, because that's what it does under the cover. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to take a look at that. Um, so beware of the pop pipeline. I um, I was watching some performance videos, and Dr. Tobias wrote this. Um, so if you pipe out, so if you have a, you know this stuff at the top, and then you pipe it to out file file dot text, it'll take forty eight seconds. But if you use the input object dollar sign all instead, it'll be twenty five seconds in the SQL world. This I think is is uh, the difference between set based thinking, which is the second line, and then row by agonizing row, which is the first line. So the pipeline is super amazing. It's crazy useful, but Dr. Tobias said no one to use it um, in his video. This is crazy slow. Too. <laughs> it's really just crazy. crazy. It's great. As we've evolved PowerShell, everything in PowerShell has been a lot faster, except pipeline. That's next. Awesome. Where? So, Jeff Vouchers, I learned this the other day, yeah. and he actually mentioned you in it as well. Um, I always do it the first way because I want to be structured and formal, and even if I'm just looking at one thing, I'll use, you know, the brackets. Um, and so that's the way I did it. I didn't realize that it was even, even slower than the second one, which I think I'm going to switch to. Um, and then with this one, and I don't remember exactly why, and you're welcome to join in and say why. Well, you had added it in PS3. In or 4. Oh, in 4. With added for DSC. And then this wasn't the intention. Speed wasn't in the, wasn't the intention. It just happened to be a side effect, correct? It wasn't totally not an intention. Mm -hmm. I knew it would be faster. Awesome. And there's one other tweak in the syntax. You can get rid of the open parens, so you can like dot, where, phone, brace, uh, script, logic. Oh, cool, awesome. It just, it just 
we can know where it's building up so it changes the parser. Wow, that's amazing. No, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. For a method call, you don't need the parentheses? If, if, if the method takes a single argument that's a script block, then you can omit the parens. Ah, wow. Still, the, the, the gray still has that's to touch the, the, the method, or the, the uh, method name. So no space. No space. But Is that in four as well? What you're uh, mentioning? Yeah. yeah. That would be beautiful. Uh, how is it even possible that number two is faster? Uh, number two is faster because, so what's happening in number one is that every time an object comes through, you call into the script block uh, and you evaluate the structure. What happens in number two is that you don't, there's no script block there. In number two, it is just using a, a hard coded evaluator that looks at the, the dash like parameter, takes the name of the value, and then just very quickly computes it in C sharp. So it's pretty fast. Uh, and then the bottom one, because it's avoiding, avoiding the pipeline entirely. Okay, so the second one, the second one would, if it was done without the pipeline, would be faster, would be the fastest. But the bottom one doesn't do the, doesn't use the pipeline, and the pipeline overhead of the is really hot. Yeah. Oh. And that's one of the reasons why uh, I, 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 I was suggesting that if people use classes, then you can use method dispatch rather than function dispatch, and method dispatch is a great deal faster. Awesome. So, uh, you don't want to write, you don't obviously want to write everything that way. You don't want to write end user experiences, but you can do all your logic in classes and then service right, yeah. commands that use those classes. Kind of just like you do in C Yeah. Uh, is it still true in PowerShell 4 and 5 that if you're going to use um, an operator like AND or OR, that you still have to use the curly braces? Um, all of the if you, if you If you do uh, a get command on where object, you will find that it has about 8 billion parameter sets because every one of those like is as greater than less than is its own parameter set. No, no, I'm thinking that the multi, if you if you have multiple criteria for oh, yeah, where, yeah, you, have multiple, yeah. you have to use yeah. you have to use the curly braces. Can you still yeah. use the where method? Oh uh, yeah, you use where method. You can, like the, the where method is, is the the sort of behavior is the same with where object and the where method. Uh, they both take identical script blocks. You can, you can use and you can send you know messages to carrier pigeons to put. Yeah. So the only thing you can't do with multiple criteria is the second one. Right. It's Got a it. It's exactly the same. <laughs> Sorry, Chrissy. Thank you. No problem. If you can take that and write it out for me, because yeah. I totally couldn't follow. <laughs> <laughs>